This video was made possible by ExpressVPN. Start browsing the web securely with three months free by going to expressvpn.com HAI. In 1788, England hatched a devious plot. One by one, they rounded up tens of thousands of local criminals onto ships, sailed them out into the middle of the Indian Ocean, and sunk the ships, killing everyone on board. The ships, and the innumerable bodies trapped inside them, remained hidden for eternity at the bottom of the sea right here where Australia would be if it existed at all. That's right, Australia doesn't exist, it never existed, the entire fictional landmass is at the center of the largest cover-up in human history, and sure, now you're probably thinking, but I've been to Australia. Wrong. You've actually been to the eastern Patagonian desert in Argentina after being tricked by a cabal of corrupt airline pilots sworn to covering up 18th century England's 67th worst genocide. Wait. Hold on, I'm sorry guys, I think my new intern has been feeding me research from conspiracy theory sites again. And believe it or not, this isn't the only widespread conspiracy theory about Australia not existing. A lot of people, even some Australians, believe that Australia isn't a country, but is actually an American corporation. The weird thing is, it turns out they're actually kind of right. But in order to explain exactly how, and in order to determine whether or not Australians should be jumping in the ocean and swimming to the nearest real country, we need to talk about how Australia became a company in the first place. The year is 2009. Barack Obama has just been sworn in as the 44th President of the United States. Peanut Corp is being implicated in the deaths of 9 Americans and the poisoning of 600 more. You are alone in your room, recovering from the swine flu, playing Wii Sports Resort on mute as your mother weeps in the living room, unsure if your family will ever be able to recover from the worst economic recession since the Great Depression. By June, all of these connected dots will eventually culminate in Australia's incorporation in the United States. Well, I mean, except for the Obama thing, and the peanut thing, and the swine flu thing and the Wii Sport, really just the recession thing. The recession is what will lead to Australia's eventual incorporation in the United States. You see, when a country's economy starts to collapse, the idea of drawing all your money out of your bank account and investing it in gold and man-killing crossbows before the bank collapses starts to sound really appealing. Suddenly, everyone is kicking down the door of the nearest Wells Fargo, draining their banks of all their money, and things get really bad. Like, a whole bunch of people lose their entire life savings because the banks ran out of money and shut down bad. Knowing that this sort of run on the bank could happen in their country if the downturn reached them, Australia promised all of its citizens that even if all the banks collapsed, the government would be able to pay back any of the money that they weren't able to withdraw in time. With this sort of reassurance, there would be no reason for people to panic, and hopefully, the run on the bank would never happen in the first place. Now, that sounds good, but it also sounds good when you tell a girl at the bar that your favorite hobby is skiing down a giant mountain of gold coins like Scrooge McDuck. The problem, however, is the same when you need to prove it, where is that money going to come from? Australia couldn't just print more money. Well, I mean, they could, but then you run into the risk of crazy hyperinflation like the Weimar Republic, and lesson one of history is that you really, really don't want to be the Weimar Republic. So they decided that if it ever came to it, they should just borrow the money from someplace else. Specifically, American companies. Now, it's not quite that simple. Lending money to a country instead of a company comes with certain risks. For example, if I lent money directly to Australia, Australia could just pass the Sam is a total rube and no one has to ever pay him his money back law. So in order to follow these same regulations as other American companies, Australia had to register as a corporation with the US Securities and Exchange Commission, creating its very own prospectus, business plan, budget outline, basically everything a real American corporation would need to secure investors. So what does this mean for Australians? Is Australia not a real country? Are Australians all just American employees? Are evil American investors pocketing Australian taxpayers' hard-earned money? Yes, yes, and yes. Ugh, wait, sorry, that was my conspiracy theorist intern again. The real answer is, of course, no. The Australian Treasury owns the company in full, the shares are not available on any stock exchange, and the prospectus prohibits any share of the company from being traded, sold, or compensated with dividends. And let's be honest. It's not like investors are jumping to cash in on a company whose most popular product is a middle-aged guy with a big knife, anyway. The point is, Australia's incorporation is largely a precautionary measure to protect its own citizens, and in fact, the company has never once needed to be used because its very existence successfully prevented the disaster it was built to remedy. Now, if you're an Australian watching, you might be frustrated to learn that your country is an American corporation when you still don't have access to every American movie and TV show on your Netflix servers. That's why you should use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN allows you to change your location so that you can watch any movie or TV show that's not available in your country on Netflix, BBC iPlayer, and many other streaming services.
What's more, ExpressVPN provides a layer of protection over your internet traffic to prevent advertisers, internet service providers, and government surveillance agencies from gathering information about you and encrypts 100% of the data flowing between your devices and the internet. That's why I make sure to always have it on when using public Wi-Fi. Best of all, you can try ExpressVPN with three months free by going to expressvpn.com slash H-A-I.